we blew all our material in the in the pre warm up chat. So yeah, here we are, stranded in the desert wasteland that is awkward silence. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, from Number One Project, <laughs> from Behind the Mistakes, and KJ from Crude But Efficient. How Hurrah! you doing, fellas? <laughs> oh, it's currently 25 degrees in here. I am quite warm. And I can't open the door because the neighbours are cutting their hedge. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to look at work when you're at home. Or... Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been? Uh, great, uh, except yeah. that I'm uh, back uh, at work. How's yeah, it going? Let's, let's just gloss over that part and uh, just get to the good part. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah I, I'm, I actually surprised myself with enjoying uh, going to, to work. Perhaps it is. Just that it's nice to talk to other grown-ups and not have to think about uh, making sure that the kids don't kill each other, that they have something to eat, if someone has to go to the bathroom and all of that. <laughs> it's a tricky decision to make, isn't it? Having to deal with kids or talking to grown-ups. Uh, which one's the worst? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, that very much depends on the kids and the grown-ups, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's been a bit of a like, okay, you, you start off in kindergarten and then they just cram you together with all the other kids. And it's the same. You, you go into the school system and they just pack you together. And then there is a period with joy when you go to uh, university or, or some place where you actually choose your own direction. So you get teamed up with people that have the uh, like mindset, the same hobbies. Uh, and then you venture into work and then it's back. It's like kindergarten all over again. You're just crammed together um, with people you basically have nothing in common with. Uh, you don't like half of them. And then there are someone there trying to well, make some activities going, but I mean, it's like uh, herding geese. So it's, <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I'm waiting for the next step. Yeah, I felt really old at work uh, this spring when we had uh, an, uh, a new kid started up. Kid, I mean, fresh out of university, really excited and wanted to do stuff and <laughs> ready to take action. Oh, yeah, we should yeah. we should go and, and sing karaoke and we should do this. And uh, oh, God, I am so Tone it old. down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is, it's been the first week back to work. And then, of course, the email comes back to work barbecue. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to work barbecue sounds horrendous. Let's do finish early Friday instead. <laughs> and don't yeah, see each other. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> let's have a beer in different places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, bring a beer, take it with you home, enjoy your life. <laughs> take a picture of it, don't send it to anyone. <laughs> I was kind of thinking if I were to run my own company with employees, would I just hire introverts and like, yeah, we all have home office. We don't work on Fridays. Monday's a bitch, so... It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, of course, six hours days, two hour lunches. I mean, I have to pick the good things from all the <laughs> various parts. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the trouble is finding the really productive people who are good at keeping deadlines and can solve their own, own problems. I guess they are pretty expensive to come by. <laughs> it's all about motivation. When I um, I used to work for a landscaping company uh, years ago now, but I used to have a team of people working under me, and um, I used to get to work in the morning, especially if, if the owner was away. And we used to have um, several massive properties to look after, and I used to say, we've got this to do, we've got this to do, we've got this to do. As soon as that's done, we are all going home. 
And it's amazing how that motivates people to crack <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's the thing, though. I have been able to corner that part of the work landscape where I basically are just responsible for myself. So, I mean, if the, if the tasks are done, nobody really cares <clears throat> when you come, when you go. Uh, and then you get teamed into projects with other people. So then that kind of dictates still... You have the freedom, but it's just on paper because you have to interact with other people. So yeah, the way you say, I mean, if we if we can just get some people together and give them the right incentives, so this is what we need to done. The faster we do it, then we can go home. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the Sounds key thing like there is to have your obligations are stuff that no one else can do. And they don't know how hard it is to do it. So you can make it look a lot harder than this and be done uh, in half no, no. the time and impressing you, everyone. <laughs> you got it wrong. It, it's, it's supposed to be something that no one else can do and they don't know how easy it is. And then, of course, <laughs> yeah, you, them, you yes. need to make it very hard and complain. And I think it was the <laughs> Seinfeld episode where George Costanza just just move fast. Look like you're in a hurry and people will leave you alone. And if you're just sitting at your desk like... Oh, make all these gestures, breathe loudly, and so on. So if someone pops into the office, oh, oh he's really busy, and it will just fuck off and leave you alone. <laughs> so. <laughs> so that's enough uh, enough work talk, I think, for now. Come on, this is Make a Podcast. What have you been making, guys? What have you been up to? I've been paving a pathway. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, because I felt uh, the stress of... Uh, vacation ending and projects stacking up so yeah, i was uh, a grass widower this weekend uh, that is to say the kid the wife and the kids went away so i was home alone and what then did you i call it grass widower okay <laughs> it's called that in sweden i don't Fair know enough. why that's, same, that's of course exactly the same in norway <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course it is carry on <laughs> yeah. so uh, so that means i i w- did not open a bear and just fuck around i i Spent the entire day paving the uh, the pathway until I ran out of sand and daylight, uh, approximately at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I only okay. took a break and in the middle of the day when the sun was beaming into hot. And then I took the chance to take out the kitchen table and sand it all off again and <laughs> put on new coats of varnish. Um, How's so, it yeah. looking? Uh, great, I would yeah. say. You fixed it. I think so. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> and did you film it for the fix it video? Yes. Yes, I did. Nice. <laughs> I mean it's it's I mean it's really it's a, yay, it's the most fun part of a making project, sanding and finishing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just gonna be a snippet, but yeah, it's just showing the the problems with it. Yeah. That that it didn't look good and the varnish was breaking off in big pieces because I'd done a shit job at <laughs> sanding the first time around. Did you sand it to too high a grit, do you think? Or no, I just think I did a I didn't sand it enough. Uh or poorly. Uh, I think so at least. Fair or enough. I would choose uh, a bad varnish, I think. Right. Uh, because I just went to the store and said, okay, this, this one says uh, furniture varnish. I should take this. This will probably be fine. So this time <laughs> around, I actually went and asked someone who know, knows what they're doing. And they say, no, you should use uh, this instead with uh, the floor varnish, which is just, a lot stronger. <laughs> I was just about to say that the only bits of uh, furniture I've ever finished with varnish have been done with floor varnish just because we've had some left over. Mm. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah. apparently what you should do. And I choose the, the strongest of them as well and it looks a lot better so yeah hopefully it will work out fantastic the kids were a bit surprised when they got home and the kitchen table has shrunk because i put in there <laughs> how much did you sand one. it <laughs> <laughs> like 20 centimeters on both sides <laughs> i'd say you sanded it enough at that then oh no it's, it's still a curing in the workshop it should i think it's done by now but yeah now I'm recording a podcast, so we're not carrying a big bloody table. 
<laughs> I barely got it down in the workshop by myself, and I'm not carrying it the the finished one off by myself because then I'm just <laughs> going to drop it and have to redo it all, all again. Did you record yourself getting it down the stairs? Uh, no, because <laughs> that would no, that would not have worked well. <laughs> that would have been cool, just. Uh... Like duct tape the GoPro camera to the table or something, and then man, <laughs> handle yeah. it down the stairs, cursing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would, that would have made like a good show. Yeah. <laughs> if only I had someone who hold the camera for me. <laughs> so I think that's all the making I have done since last we talked. What about you? Well, um, I haven't been doing any actual making, but I, I've been filming content for a making video and when you said you wish you had someone filming yourself i just uh was at the hardware store looking for various bits and bobs and of course uh, parts for my next build and i just hmm, i just handed my phone to my daughter and press <laughs> record and just film daddy and then i just strolled along and found some parts for the padlock build and yeah, she did a really decent job of just trailing behind me and filming. Of course, she, she, the best thing about the entire video is she's giggling every time I uh, look at her. So it's like uh, you got the soundtrack as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that looks great. Oh, I had um, Lily film me once. I um, can't remember which video it was, but she was filming me walking up the lane talking to camera. And we couldn't make eye contact because every time we did, we both just cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wish I, yeah, I had to send my kids to some kind of class for how to film. <laughs> I think. Yeah, that's a good tip. Actually, there is there is probably like a, a a movie making boot camp, summer camp for kids. So I think if you send your kids to that, it's a win win. You get a few weeks off, and uh, when they <laughs> come back, they are very eager to try all the new techniques, and you just hand them the camera here <laughs> do you think they'd possibly come back being proper diva directors though and uh, really telling you how your video should look and you should be doing this yeah. and you should be doing that uh, yes probably but might, would you... <laughs> might be the key to a few more views eh boys <laughs> yeah, would the videos get better that's the yeah. question <laughs> again views is views <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the, the 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 topics would be my my dweebs, kibidi skibidi, dad uh, doing makeup <laughs> things. I mean, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't even know what it meant, but <laughs> yeah, we just goof around and yeah. So, I think we missed the train on the skibidi toilet uh, thing. Uh, otherwise, that could be a fun thing to make. I I just know it's a thing, <laughs> and I, I've seen adults making videos where they don't understand it but i just like i'm not gonna figure out what it is i i, I can't really be bothered so yeah i'm old I have, <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. lucky you so that's uh <laughs> let's move on um <laughs> but yeah i uh i'm gonna be a grass widower as well the upcoming weekend um and check the weather forecast it's going to be really nice weather on saturday morning and of course i would like to film the intro on the bridge for the padlock video without too many people around but still with sunlight so you get decent shots so i might be up at the ass crack of dawn on saturday <laughs> <laughs> just to film two minutes of me talking on a bridge and then fuck off again to to make the rest. <laughs> so Have that, you talked about uh, the padlock pro project on here before? No, I think in passing, uh, just okay. Uh, not uh, at all. But yeah, that's the plan. I'm making a, a huge ass padlock, and the reason is, of course, the the local bridge. Um, close to us people do the they write their names on padlocks and they I put them on the bridge and they throw the key in it's like a, a symbol of eternal love and yeah i would like to have the biggest padlock around so that's <laughs> that's the only key yeah 
it's a pissing contest and I'm <laughs> intending to win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's very much an art piece, I would say. Yeah, that's the thing, though. When I, when I found... I mean, the, the most complicated part is the... What's it called? The neck of the padlock or the... Yeah, the... The, the ring? Yeah. Yeah. The tip. I, I don't know what it's called. But <laughs> anyhow, I thought, all right, I'll, I'll make it out of PVC. And then bending PVC pipe. You need to heat it up. I don't have a jig. And then, of course, you can fill it with sand, cap the ends. Uh, but then the sand would absorb a lot of the heat and you would end up just putting way too much heat in and it would just melt the plastic. So I just, I've been thinking about this for weeks. And then, of course, I was just sitting in my office looking for some parts that was to a work-related project. And then I just stumbled over a steel 180 degrees bend is basically parts for uh, build your own exhaust and it's like this is all i need so I just bump that project <laughs> up to the top of the list because uh, now i can knock it out in a week i'm not sure if i can build the padlock completed by saturday i think i could have the parts i mean building it but making the uh look alike metal brass finish that is going to be difficult I'm, I'm guessing i'm going to paint it and put primer on and paint it again and put primer on and paint it again and watch every nerd forge video to try to figure out how do you paint something to make it look like metal <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're a bit time constrained as well because you've got the podcast to edit this week as well haven't you so is that a week as well? Yeah, well, I mean, a, a twofer, yeah. No Worth worries. a try. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got one for it. No. But that is, it is fun though, because, okay, I haven't started building it yet, but I, I bought the part so I can film the intro uh, in the workshop and then looking for the padlock that I'm using for a, a scale model. And you have to imagine how and what you're going to say when you're on the bridge, because there needs to be continuity to the, the recording I do in the workshop. So, uh, of course, then when I make it, it needs to be finished. So I need to be on that bridge two times, because I, I if I finish the padlock, I can do everything in one go, but I, I can't really do that. And I have the golden opportunity this Saturday to at least get some recording and then I got a time constraint because it can't become winter or dark or whatever because I need to have roughly the same <laughs> daylight. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm giving myself two weeks to complete it. Ah, oh, seems like plenty of time. Yeah, that's you, nothing. That is. You got the bar <laughs> neck ring thing, and it's all CNC work. It's just that brass effect, isn't it? Yeah, you just get brass and, paint. And of course, I'm very much divided um, because when I found the ring and I have painted all, painted, I, I've drawn up all the parts in CAD and it might end up looking amazing. And my first intention was when I was going to make it in PVC, I was going to make it in two parts and I'm going to have uh, epoxy in my pocket so on the bridge i would just put epoxy around <laughs> the end of the ring i just put it on and like put it together and then it would be fixed there so if people were trying to pull at it it, it wouldn't come off until you destroyed it so i was thinking about just leaving it there and yeah. see if I, I could find any comments in the local newspaper or whatever but now that i have the metal ring and i start to see that this might end up looking really good i want it on my wall <laughs> <laughs> so then i'm thinking if i make the two holes where the ring go into and i just flush mount two magnets in there and then you could just slide the the metal ring in and the magnets will hold it in place so i can just take it off again so yeah, I'm still a bit divided because it would be a nice gag to just leave it there for people yeah. to see over several days. But uh... I mean, it's not any fun if you take it with you. I say make make two of them at the same time and 
and put up the the best one on your wall and the worst one on the bridge. Definitely need to leave it on the bridge. That's a golden opportunity. It's a good yeah. marketing move. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's the other thing. Should I just take a QR code at the bottom at it? So if someone looks at it and there's a QR code here and they scan it and they come right to my channel. Yes. And to the build video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. But then again, well, they... Not yeah. gonna go to jail for it. I mean, it's a, it's a practical joke. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. That's it's the worst thing. Fine. The worst thing that's going to happen is all your friends and neighbors are going to find out what you do, <laughs> what you do in that workshop. At all right, night. I'm bringing it home. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken shit. <laughs> but you have a fair point because they have more of those parts, and of course. Do I have enough scrap wood to make two? Most likely. And if it was just bolting the parts together, that would be a very easy solution. But I mean, do I want to do all that sanding, priming, painting of two at the same time? <laughs> but if you have two, then you can be more experimental with uh, the paint job as well, because you always have the the second one. If you if you mess it up too much, you can just no, that's this the bad one. Building two of something's really hand can be really handy when you're doing a video as well, especially if you're just pretending to do one. So twice now we did the cigar box. We built two cigar boxes at the same time. So that was quite handy for crossover filming. And I also built two cajons at the same time. Yeah. If it's you just... want to look uh, really competent, you make the first one and then you learn a lot and then you do the second one <laughs> yeah. and just have the... <laughs> the good parts. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but fuck, yeah. Uh, I'm going to think about that building too, because, yeah, it would be really cool to just leave it hanging there. Yeah. And just do a bank and don't sign it if you if you feel scared. But that's, that's the thing, though. They, they need to be different, because if it looks good, and the only thing keeping it together is a magnet, then the first kid who managed yeah. to figure that out is going to bring it home and put it on yeah. his wall. Yeah. So I need to make one where you, once you insert that metal tube, it, it hardens and it won't come loose until, unless someone brings a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's, that's the good thing, that metal pipe. It's not very thick, but the diameter of it is, I mean, you don't get bolt cutters that wide, so someone needs to either bring an angle grinder or yeah, a sledgehammer, so yeah. How hilarious would it be, though, to go back and watch the council grind it off and get that last bit of footage for the video? That would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> or you come back two weeks later and there's even a bigger one. Top <laughs> game on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's my uh, that's my kind of competition. <laughs> if that starts happening, I am moving to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I want in on that. <laughs> I so did you... actually. Uh, I did some googling, and I, I found also like the world's biggest padlock. It's not as big as you think. <laughs> so it was also like, hmm. Should I make it working with a key that operates it and everything? How large do I need to be to actually have the Guinness World of Records? But no, it's, I'm not going to escalate it to this. But <laughs> not, not in two weeks. <laughs> no. It would be really cool to make some kind of locking mechanism. Just you, you push in a stick or something that releases hooks that hold something. But yeah, not in two weeks. Uh, are you going to put a brand on it as well because most padlocks have it and uh, are you going to just put abus or are you going to make your own yeah it's i mean obviously it's going to be abus because that's the when you say padlock to me that's the one that pops up yeah um and i i found their logo in vector format and i thought that's an invitation <laughs> to use it so i did so i just dragged it into uh fusion 360 and like two clicks and there it was so <laughs> That's going to be the world's unlikeliest um, YouTube sponsor, isn't it? <laughs> that would be amazing. 
Yeah. And we've got all these padlocks they keep sending me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- but that would be cool, though. And I, I, it's, um, I think it's called the, the Lock Picking Lawyer. That's a huge YouTube channel. People are just sending him locks. Try to see if you can pick this one. And you have YouTubers making locks that they try to make them unpickable. And he like, 10 seconds and it's in. So, yeah. <laughs> If you were sponsored by them, you'd have to do a series of makes using them, wouldn't you? And I can only think of chastity belts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the nice use of padlocks, perhaps. I mean, <sighs> and I think, seeing as though I've done voiceovers for you, I think it's only fair that KJ models the chastity belts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, no problem. Uh, <laughs> it needs some leather and some skulls, <laughs> <laughs> preferably dangling at the end of a chain. <laughs> That's, that's a brilliant, I don't remember when I saw it the first time, but someone says, well, it's legal to steal a bike, but it's not illegal to put an additional bike lock on it, is it? So people <laughs> were just buying relatively cheap bike locks at a hardware <laughs> store and they just went out and, all right, someone has locked this uh, bicycle to a fence. Let's make it double secure and just put another lock on. And then, of course, the owner is going to come and going to leave. And there's a lock here. <laughs> That's just really mean. Yeah. <laughs> and there, then there's the other one that someone did in our town. Someone has left their bicycle leaning onto a flagpole. Uh. So they, they, <laughs> they took the rope and they tied that to the crank part of the bicycle and they slowly hoisted it up until the top bar of the bicycle tipped over the flagpole and then you just let it down again. <laughs> so the entire frame was around the, <laughs> the flagpole. <laughs> and of course the owner really struggled, but of course, if you just thought about it, you could do the same operation, but you really struggle because it's going to tip the other way. So they, they ended up having to call someone to just <laughs> lay it down <laughs> flat to get it off again. That's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant and mean. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you, need, you need a bit of both. <laughs> so how about you, Glenn? Any making done since last time? I mean, you just had a video out, but... Yeah, I've got this. Um, got a friend up the road called Big H... Yeah, and uh, yeah, I made him a whiskey cup. <laughs> Ooh, I like whiskey. He's a lucky guy. He really is. Yeah, mm. it's a coincidence, isn't it, that you share the same name? <laughs> yeah, we have the same uh, capital letter in the uh, beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I sat to you on uh, Saturday and uh, did a bit of lathing and made a whiskey cup, and I'm really quite happy with it. Apart from it's a little bit smaller, but I've figured out. Yeah, but you I'm not really... a heavy drinker, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You need a really big piece of oak to make a decent sized glass, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it's an enjoyable project. And uh, Have you tried uh... using it? No, because it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still impressed how thin you got it without cracking or anything. That's What was it? 2.4 or 5 the, millimeters? The original one was... A... About two point two, that that first little practice run I had, yeah. and this one's probably about three and a half. I didn't take it quite as uh, thin because I'm not quite sure how it's going to react once it's had liquids and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. But the that's... only thing I'm go on, carry on. Yeah, that, that's the other thing because I've seen people make them and they use a, a stainless steel inner lining. I've got one of those actually. Yeah, but I kind of. Th- think that i mean as long as it's untreated oak and of course as long as you sand it so it doesn't uh, put uh, splinters in your throat i mean maybe it's a good thing not yeah. lining it just having yeah it's, I think there's plenty out there which aren't lined and they're just they're just wood and yeah i was just about to say i'm a little bit sorry i couldn't scorch the inside but i actually don't own a blowtorch so and that's a reason right, to buy one. That's, uh, that's yes. a... <laughs> yeah, I've had lots exactly. of reasons to buy one. I've just not got around to it yet. I mean, yeah. Don't you have any, one of those that you burn off weeds with uh, for the garden? 
No, I use my hands and pull the weeds or spray them off with weed killer. <laughs> I use weed killer then. Yeah. <laughs> that should probably work. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> Add be fine. something in the I, taste. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I have blowtorch, so but make four or five extra just in case, and <laughs> we can make a video of it. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm going to send it to you, Havar, and um, feel free to scorch it. And if it if it doesn't work, we'll just make another one. Because somebody warned me when I got the lathe that um, lathe wood turning is addictive, and it is a little bit addictive, to be honest with you. You can do something pretty cool, pretty quick. Yeah, how long um, did it take you to do that? It would have taken me probably less than an hour if I wasn't filming. Hmm. With filming, about four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah, but I had two phones on the go filming. When, well, I normally just film in um, for a, a main YouTube video, and then I end up shrinking everything down to fit the short for the long form. Uh, the, sorry, the short form. So I actually had two phones in you know one horizontal one ah, vertical yes, <laughs> and moving two phones around was a complete bugger i mean it really was <laughs> faffy <laughs> i mean i really wish you could have a camera that filmed in i mean sure you can but um, they cost money and i don't uh, like to pay stuff uh, just filmed in a square so you could cut it yeah. either way uh, <laughs> yes to get a uh, landscape or portrait but it was it was really worth filming it um with both um cameras um both um Phone, sorry, because the um, the the short has compensated for the uh, the long form video not doing so great. So it's been nice. <laughs> yeah, it was a really nice short, I think. Yeah, and I got one from I did a I released one the day before as well, where the cup keeps jumping off the lathe as well. <laughs> <laughs> it jumped off the lathe twice while I was <laughs> doing it and survived. I, yeah, 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 perfectly fine. Yeah, I was doing something dodgy. It deserved to fall off, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've, I've seen, I mean, th- thanks to you and Tim, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of lathe videos lately. And if I were to venture into uh, at least wood lathes, I would put down a mattress because it seems like it's fairly usual that things fly. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I can I... understand it's being addictive and I'm just, can't wait to get uh, a lathe myself. So uh... yeah, you can always turn wood on your metal lathe, can't you? Yeah, yeah, that's not problem. <laughs> I mean, Just a, more unlimited. <laughs> so, have you started using a face shield yet? No. <laughs> no, no. The double squint. <laughs> more <laughs> than enough. I've, 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 Just I've, close I've, your I've, eyes and put the steel to the spinning wood. <laughs> that would be fine. I have to wear my reading glasses anyway. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I have noticed with, I was always reluctant to get a lathe because of I was always worried about the amount of mess they make. Because whenever you see a lathe in video, it's the, the the workshop's always just full of dust, isn't it? Yeah, something like Turgworks. Yeah. Tur- works. yeah, something like Tim's. So we don't we don't mean to keep putting Tim down because we love him, but yes, yeah, it's a very good example of a dusty workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I figured out is that I just don't think would turn as like hoovering up after they've done a job because if you hoover up after each time it really does keep the mess down to a minimum it's no more messy than using the router for half an hour to be fair mm. so so it's just a, a so social demographic yeah, i mean it's uh got nothing to do with the lathe basically it's, it's the people who are using lathes that yeah. are dirty bastards basically so is this yeah. a self fulfilling prophecy that neat people see that oh no i can't get a laid because that's messy so they never get one <laughs> i think that's i think that's an absolute fact i mean i wouldn't have got one or got interested in it if michelle hadn't um, started talking about it incidentally she's done no turning so far <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean that's more or less the only uh, space and that it feels like it's really messy is the reason why I don't have a lathe. Yeah. No, if you, if you go around with the vac after you've done it, it's it's not that bad. The dust does disappear. Yeah, because I was looking at, uh, you have a few portable ones or the ones that you can, when you're not using it, you can just put it vertical uh, yeah. on the wall. And I could fit that and that, that would be nice. And you can also, uh, I can make mounts for it on my table that I wheel outside when it's nice weather. So, yeah. 
might end up with one of those, and those are relatively cheap. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I should look out for one on the marketplaces and that sort of thing. Well, I'll tell you um, what, KJ. I mean, I I picked mine up, and I think it's a it's a decent make. It's quite a comprehensive lathe. I got three chisels with it, some bits of oak. Came with a chuck, the center points, um, and it was a hundred quid second hand. I mean, it's nothing That's really, nothing. is it? No. I mean, you could, <laughs> if you don't like it, you could just flog it, and you're going to get a hundred quid back for it, aren't you? At that point, yeah, probably. Yeah. But speaking of turning tools, um, they're expensive. For, for, for so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do with some of those. <laughs> um, no, but uh, all right, not turning, uh, spinning tools. Um, I, I've seen some videos the last week of uh, this old Tony, and of course, now I, I get all these ads for the, the Tormek uh, sharpening uh, rig system, and they, they of mm. course, have the T4 and the T8, and they are hella expensive, and you need to buy all the accessories as well. And that's uh, almost doubles the price. Um, yeah. And then I, I was at the hardware store and they sell them, but they also sell the off brand one. And there are some differences, but the, the main component is made of the same thing. And I mean, it's, it's some grinding wheels and a buffing wheel and you have a water tank uh, for the one wheel. And then it's an electric motor who is actually spinning it. And I mean, so they have one of the proper sharpening wheels as well. The I don't know what they are. Is it DBM wheels or something like that? I don't know. Or DMB wheels. But I can't really see, given the components, I can't see that uh, the four time more expensive Tormek one is four time as good as the cheap one. But then again, I. I um... I've talked to a lot of people and everybody wants this rig because it really ups your sharpening game. And for me, that's very easy because I don't have one. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't sharpened anything ever. Oh, that's, that's wrong. I sharpened my ax with an angle grinder and that is decent. Um, <laughs> of course, it's blunt after two logs, but I mean, the yeah, first one it's is the same. really... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking, should I have that in my workshop? How much was it? Uh, I think it's they only had the T four and I think I think that's sufficient and it is a uh, hundred pounds roughly. Just the knockoff one. No, no, no. That's the original one. I think it's hundred pounds. No, oh, it can't be no uh, four four hundred pounds and a knockoff right. one was a hundred. So yeah, right. it was yeah, that's one fourth. Yeah. Well if it comes with those proper the metal wheels for sharpening. I mean, they're about 40, 50 quid on their own. I don't, I don't think that it is. I think it comes with the regular stones and then you have yeah, the diamond one, one wheels. One stone and one uh, leather coated wheel for it. But you can't run those through water, can you? Or can you? The stone runs through water, but oh, the, the okay. other side is uh, the dry side. Right. Hmm. Oh, you should get no, I think that, that, that <laughs> money is. Half of it is just the, the R and D costs for them, and half of it is its brand. Yeah. So, what I would like that you could do, Glenn, if you you can check, do you get? Of course, these uh, these sharpening wheels they are fitted onto an axle, and if I remember correctly, you have the chuck accessory, so. Can't you just buy the grinding wheel and chuck it in your lathe, and then you can start Ooh. sharpening your tools? That's a video. That's a bloody good idea. Mm. I mean, I do have a bench grinder, so it would make more sense to use that. But I do kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> it would make more sense, but yeah, the most important is you you need to put a trough underneath with water, and then of course uh, you have to spin it up so you have a grinding wheel flying amidst uh, some sharp tools that. <laughs> put one of those uh, wheels on your angle grinder and film that. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two seconds, your chisel's glowing red. <laughs> yeah. You need uh, you yeah. need a separate tool to spin it up uh, so before the angle grinder can take over yeah <laughs> oh that at would moment... be terrifying a stone wheel at 11,000 rpm <laughs> 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 oh. 
a lot of people um you can get sanding discs that you put on the lathe you can use that for sanding obviously yeah a lot of people yeah. tend to do that but i already have one of those so it's yeah yeah i just have my belt sander in that piece of wood which i actually love i only want to get a proper bench sander because i would like my belt sander back <laughs> yeah i sharpen all my stuff on that by the way at the moment Seems to work all right. Well, I say all my stuff, my wood turning chisels, I turn, I'm sharpen on that. Yeah, and the, the only reason I want to up my sharpening game is, of course, at some point I, I want a nice set of chisel with proper wooden handles, and I want to yeah. take a bit of care of them. Uh, the ones I have now, I, I use them as uh, pry bars, screwdrivers, chisels yeah. uh, for concrete and everything and uh... <laughs> yeah, having having a nice set of chisels is really worth having i've got a nice set of chisels and they really are worth looking after and the, the, the difference in a nice set of sharp chisels to the ones we use for opening paint and stuff is night and day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think all my chisels are second hand and someone else had have, have already done a bad job at sharpening them uh way back so i mean yeah but the, it's yeah. It, it's like a pencil and most people don't sharp them, so so you can find them at every car boot sale. Uh, they are basically just throwing them after you've given it away. And I mean, if you have a proper sharpening tool, I mean, you don't have to buy chisels ever again. You can just sharpen ones that you find on the side of the road, or <laughs> as long as they've not been sharpened on a uh, on a on a bench grinder and up until they're glowing they, they, they should be fine yeah i think I, then, I bought uh... a, i bought a set that had been i think had been sharpened like that and they wouldn't keep their edge for more than two goes to be fair yeah but that that's just uh yeah. that's just an incentive to learn quenching <laughs> i mean then you just bring it up to glowing red and then you quench it in oil and then you uh bring it back again of course you need to build yourself one of these propane uh for just something to get it up to right temperature and then after some practice you might get a decent result or you can go to a blacksmith and make yeah. him do it for you <laughs> if if you buy a decent set of chisels you don't need the actual the sharpening station i bought um three diamond stones at different grades and i sharpen my chisels on them because i've done it from them being new i just i just hone them every once in a while yeah, but those it, it don't take... have those don't have a motor. <laughs> it takes about a minute per chisel. It's really not hard. Yeah, it does, doesn't yeah. help. You would do it in twenty yeah. seconds on a motorized one. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, for four hundred quid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I, would, I would be interested in a proper sharpening thing, though, for the wood turning chisels because they're all funny angles and weird. Yeah, yeah. But then I would quite like some nice wood turning chisels, but they are expensive for decent ones. I've had an idea to make a sharpening jig for some while now, and sometime I will do it. But yeah, that's the way down on the list of projects because I also need, I feel like I should at least be able to do a decent job sharpening something. And now I'm just, <laughs> I'm pretty bad at it. I I bought a honing guide as well, which I forgot to mention, which it, it makes a lot of difference as well. Yeah, if you've not got that uh, that muscle memory that the professionals seem to have, I haven't. No, yeah. I mean, and it's really hard to start out freehanding when you have no experience because then <laughs> you just it's just yeah. a throw of the die and it's not stacked <laughs> in your favor. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a practicing game, and of course, after a while, you can get it to eighty percent. And I, I think this old Tony as well said that the benefit of having a the Tormek is that you have the, the accessories for the, the various blades, so you get the angles. It's, it's really hard to not get it done properly yeah. and correct. And, of course, uh, uh, my wife and I, we have the same philosophy uh, when it comes to tools and knives. I, I mean, I have my tools and I treat them uh, as they should be treated. Well, <laughs> of course, uh, not chisels, <laughs> but... Um, she likes to uh, be a maker in the kitchen, and her knives is off limits. It's uh, I've learned the basics: no washing machine, uh, don't use them to uh, 
scrape uh, paint off the wall or uh, screw in the... <laughs> as you do <laughs> you with kitchen knives. You use them as flat-headed yeah. screwdrivers yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> but it, it would be nice to have the tool and just become decent at it and just not say anything and then just one evening just sharpen them beyond uh, what they ever was and just put them back in and don't say anything. <laughs> that would be cool. I hope that you don't destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined everyone. Yeah. If you do ever get your metal lathe, you will need a sharpening station actually because the 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 you will you will need to sharpen the tooling on that lathe quite regularly, won't you? No. No, I don't think so. You just you that just, depends you on what just you use. Turn it for. on the knob more more speed. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. Possibly. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the thing. You can, if you buy this uh, high-speed steel ones, then you can sharpen them yourself. And then, of course, you need the right angles, and they have like these compound angles. And if you if you're gonna do it right, you can get a good result. If not, you're just botching it. And then <laughs> the thing is, you you can buy those relatively cheap. Uh, everywhere again, car boot sale, and then you can practice on them. But now you have the ones with the, the ceramic replaceable tips, and they have become relatively cheap as well. So, I mean, and they keep sharp for a relatively long time. And when you break them, you just uh, turn them over to the the other side and keep going. And then when you wear them out, you just buy new ones. Fair enough. <laughs> That's enough. my plan. <laughs> 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 Unless I get a Tormek, of course. They probably have accessories for her. Yeah. Yeah, you should probably buy a Tormek. Tormek. Is it Tormek or Tormek? Ah, not sure. Yeah. But then it's again, it's Tarbo all over again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's not go there. But then I still again, don't know which is the right way. <laughs> no. But then again, when you buy a lathe, shouldn't it have a sharpening function at the other end? I mean, it's already yeah. having the major spinning bits. You just need a grinding wheel somewhere. How hard sure. can that be? Yeah, just on the other other end and turn down the, the speed or something like that too. Yeah, and, there, and then there's a hole. So, of course, you, you take out your tool and then uh, the next one falls in and gets sharpened while you're using one. And when it's blunt, you just <laughs> take out the new one and you put the old one in the hole. And it just, I mean, yeah, how hard can it be? <laughs> that sounds like a YouTube video. <laughs> Automatic <laughs> chisel sharpener. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. I, I bought a set of drill bits and... I have drilled two holes and I threw them away because they were they were not even straight. They were wobbling all over the place and uh, yeah, need some new ones. But I also seen the the uh, you get drill bits sharpeners. I I have drill bits that my father bought when he was twenty. I'm guessing. I mean, I have a big box and probably if you have one of those uh, sharpening tools, I would probably never have to buy uh, drill bits ever again. Then that's the question is, should I just com continue buying cheap ones for the next 40 years and that will rack up? Or should I just buy one of those sharpening machines? Buy a sharpening machine. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring it's, all it's my It's impossible with... to talk with you guys because, yeah, yeah, buy it, buy it, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> then I can bring all my chisels over in October and get them done. <laughs> <laughs> What's this in your bag, sir? Don't yeah. <laughs> And maybe we should go go to a sharpening course together to actually learn how to sharpen stuff. Os Oslo's already looking pretty full, isn't it? Yeah. The itinerary. Yeah. <laughs> but that being said, we have like um in Oslo, the city centre, they have like this food court area. And of course there is a there is a butcher uh, who has a shop there and he actually has uh, uh knife sharpening courses and they also sharpen your knife at a reasonable price. So I think it's uh you just bring him your knives and, uh, of course, you, who will have to do it when you have the time for it? So you might not get them the same day, but it was relatively cheap to get them at uh, like a razor finish. Yeah. It's a pretty cool idea, isn't it? Sharpen your knife, sell you a pound of sausages and get some <laughs> bacon. and That's brilliant. Yeah. Buy, buy two sausages place. and get a free knife sharpening. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> Those are probably probably expensive sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to make your money somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Little change of subject. We've had a couple of new people join the WhatsApp group this week. Yeah, yeah. it's still growing. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Do you want to shout them out, Havar? I don't have a list. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't have written down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't write down anything. I'm just uh, oh, there's a there's a new name. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> so we had Vern from Vern Makes join us this week, which is nice, all the way from America. America. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was probably what he wanted to hear. Yeah, most nice likely. to have you on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have to be Neil. fair, when we get an Australian in, it's going to be good day all over. <laughs> 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 I mean, you got to play to the stereotypes. <laughs> We've already had an Australian on. <laughs> I guess, yeah, but not in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. So we've also got Neil from HBR Woodwork UK. He's from Yorkshire, I think. So. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> trying to you do it. So. <laughs> I was trying to do my best Tim accent. It's not very good. Hello. I don't know. They say hello with an A, an a instead of the E at the front. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, I apologise for that, everybody. <laughs> I feel like I've let everyone down now. <laughs> no, not well, everyone. Anyhow, we Just are very people. glad to have you on board. That's uh, that's the main thing you... <laughs> if you should take anything from this. And if, anybody else, <laughs> and if anybody else wants to go through this, DM us your number and we'll add you to the group. <laughs> I'm sure people will be flooding in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is a, a really nice uh, a nice uh, WhatsApp group. To... It's just, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's a, yes. it's a decent combination of goofing around and actually asking proper questions and getting answers. That's, so that's, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a multi purpose group. You don't get proper answers from us where the goofing around part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I mean, KJ, it, KJ's posted a picture of his shoes so far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that. <laughs> But if must have been so. the must have been the night you had one beer. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm wild. I filmed my <laughs> workshop yesterday, so everyone got a workshop tour. <laughs> it was a quick ordeal, <laughs> but <laughs> you got to see all of it. <laughs> we didn't, though, did we? We didn't get to see the bit behind behind you, did we? Oh, you need to, you have some catching up to do. Yeah, oh, I did, yeah, I I did the other part. Oh, that was the second okay. one. Ah, oh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've been talking about a lot about trying to make use of the scraps in our workshops, and I actually uh, used up the the two big sheets of MDF that I used to make makeshift um, uh, cabinet doors for when we rebuilt the kitchen, because I didn't want the kids to crawl into the cabinets. So I had them, <laughs> and we had them for far too long. So they're kind of, I mean. They don't look nice because, I mean, in the kitchen you have some greasy fingers opening cabinets and that sort of thing. So they <laughs> they don't look that nice. So I cut them up in, and painted over them and made shelves and put up in the in the Lego room we have to actually uh, display some of the Lego builds that the kids do. You so they're not room. just you have a room dedicated to Lego. Yeah, I'm sweet. <laughs> I'm a Scandinavian, of course. We have a Lego <laughs> okay. Room. It's fantastic. No, it's... <laughs> it's uh, it's one of the. I mean, I think it's made to be uh, a walk-in closet, uh, so it's just a small, uh, small little room. But now, uh, the things that get built don't just lie in heaps on the floor; they can actually be, <laughs> be shown off, <laughs> so they don't get destroyed instantly. Oh, that's cool. So that's two sheets of scrap that's I got rid of. So that feels good. Nice. So last week, KJ, you you told us about your desire to be a uh, DJ years ago, and this <laughs> and this week, Havar has been uh, really strongly wanting to become a DJ. I think <laughs> more a music maker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, I've been playing a law, uh, playing playing around with uh, AI uh, music generation for a few weeks, and of course the. Uh, 
I think it's Udio I'm using now, and they just launched uh, an upgraded version that just automatically give you full songs, not just uh, 30 seconds clips that you need to build on and build on. So uh, yeah, just put in some keywords and have it auto-generate both music and text. And it's a bit of a hit and miss, but some of them are really good. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, why don't one of you two wannabe DJs play us out with one of your AI songs and tell us why this song's particularly personal to you and why, why you love it so much? <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll end this episode with the uh, with the song. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think... Uh, I mean, with all this uh, lathe heavy talk, maybe we should... Uh, Spin ourselves out with some uh, lady, <laughs> lady music. <laughs> oh. Enjoy, guys and girls. This is uh, this is a first. This is a uh, yeah. What, what's it called? This is a uh, a world premiere. <laughs> never done before. Probably <laughs> never again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my shoes already, and the labor so fast. Start us flying, feeling steady. Gonna make this moment last. Spinning around, shaping wonders in my workshop. Rice and grains and Texas grilling, sculpting art is so fulfilling. Crank it up, the rhythm paces, and the great fly here in places. Tell you what, it's fast for rising, like wonders we just analyzing. Feel the groove, it's tantalizing. Play like I'll be fantasizing. Well, I don't know about YouTube, but I thought that song was crap. <laughs> <laughs>